home from work to look after the kids, your job will be waiting for you when you come back. Right now, it is absolutely critical, I repeat critical, that as a society, we're all practicing social distancing and doing everything we can to slow the spread of this virus. We must do everything possible to avoid a situation where we see a, a sudden and dramatic spike in the number of cases. And as a result, add to the already significant burden on our healthcare system. As the government of Ontario, we're taking important steps to flatten the curve. That's why earlier this week, we declared a state of emergency and enacted special powers to limit public gatherings. And at the same time, we're investing to build further capacity in our healthcare system. Employers, employees, businesses, and politicians, we all need to do our part to look out for each other and stop COVID-19. That's what I heard this morning on a call with the Retail Council of Canada and CEOs from Ontario's retail chains, including grocery, hardware, and pharmacy. I heard today that their number one concern is the health and well-being of their employees and the public. They're taking important steps to help, like reducing store hours, stepping up cleaning in stores, and adding sick leave and guidance for employees. We talked to them about options to help practice social distancing in stores, such as offering more pickup options for customers. One of the things I heard on the call today is they need more flexibility with deliveries from the warehouses so they can restock their shelves. Right now, municipal noise bylaws prevent them from accepting deliveries at certain hours. So we're going to bring temporary changes to allow them to accept deliveries 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So people can continue to get the essentials they need. And what I heard was despite some pressure on the system due to panic buying or the supply chains in Ontario and Canada remain strong. So I'm asking people once again, be patient and do your part to take pressure off our supply chains. Please don't hoard and don't panic buy. If we all do our part, there should be plenty of supply for everyone. I wanna take a moment to recognize and thank the incredible employees throughout the supply chains that we're counting on right now. From the farmer producing food, to the trucker delivering supplies to your local store, to people stocking the shelves, and especially those working at the cash registers. These people are working hard and doing their part for Ontario. Please thank them every chance you get. If you're in a real uh, retail store, walk by and thank them. And we will have to do our part. As I said earlier this week, we're looking at every possible way to help those workers and families impacted by reduced business hours or closures. We don't want you to worry about your job. We also don't want you to worry about how you're going to make rent this month. That's why I've directed that all eviction orders be suspended until further notice. We want to make sure you and your family can stay in your home during this difficult time so you can put your health and the health of others first. Lastly, we're suspending all renewals for driver's licenses, license plate stickers, and health cards. It's just one less thing to worry about. And in the coming days and weeks, we're going to keep providing relief to families and support the employers. My friends, we need to pull together as Ontario right now. We need to take the lead. 
we need to beat this virus. And if we listen to the experts, if we practice social distancing, if we stay the course and stay together, we will get through this. I thank you and God bless. Okay, take we'll take questions. questions from the floor first. Let's alternate between Mike, if you wanna go first. Hi, uh, it's a question for health, the health minister, I believe, Premier. Uh, um, minister Elliott, uh, a group of researchers, clinicians at uh, University Hospital Network, Sunnybrook Hospital and the University of Toronto have posted uh, an analysis uh, that they say even in a conservative scenario that sees a growth rate of infections of 7.5% per day, that Ontario would uh, run out of ICU beds uh, in about uh, 37 days and would run out of ward beds in about seven weeks. What do you say to that? I would say that we are building capacity. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but we do know that the pressures on our healthcare system are going to increase. We are looking at increasing bed capacity with the announcement that was made by the Premier the other day with respect to additional resources coming to us. We will be able to increase the number of beds in the areas where we most need them. We're also looking at other alternative measures uh, where we can perhaps place some people who are alternate level of care that are currently in our hospitals to a setting that is going to be uh, safe for them and appropriate for them. So we are doing everything that we can at the command table to build our capacity to have patients uh, received at our hospitals and our other healthcare facilities. Okay, but if I look specifically at ICU beds and ventilators, which are clearly there are clearly limits to those. Uh, this scenario is just 7.5% growth rate. Today, it was a 20% jump in new infections from overnight. Uh, how mm -hmm. concerned should people be that the curve is not being flattened enough and that Ontario could, as these researchers say, run out of ICU beds and ventilators in about 37 days? I want the people of Ontario to know that we are certainly aware that there are going to be tremendous pressures on our health care system and that we are building our capacity in terms of hospital beds, health care beds generally, and in vent ventilators. We've just increased our, our uh, in-house supply by 300 ventilators. And as we indicated in the briefing yesterday, we are working with auto parts manufacturers, for example, to see if they can retool their equipment in order to produce more ventilators. So we are increasing our capacity both in terms of places for people as well as the equipment that people will need. Uh, hi, Premier. You mentioned that no one will lose their job if they have to stay home to take care of their kids. That's but right. what should healthcare workers do or other essential workers do if they don't have health care or they don't have daycare right now or kids in school right now? Well, first of all, uh, we can't run the system without the, the health care workers. And uh, we'll do whatever it takes to, to support them in, in any fashion. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm sure they're relying on, on family members and uh, other, other friends to take care of their kids. Uh, but again, we, we don't want to have gatherings of, of 50 kids in, in a room, be it daycare or, or at schools. Uh, we, we're really going to have to all stick together, uh, help our neighbours out, obviously help family members out, and, and pitch in. Uh, these are uh, unprecedented times right now, and we need everyone uh, to play their part in, in helping us out uh, right across the, this province. Um, is that why you decided not to go the route of Quebec and provide emergency child care? Uh, again, uh, everything's on the table. Uh, we have that on the table. We're working with our minister, our chief uh, medical officer of health, but we're taking nothing off the table. As the minister was saying about ventilators, and uh, there was an article in the, the, the Star. Yeah, the Star writes great articles. <laughs> and uh, there was about, uh, the, this goes back to World War II measures. We're asking the business community to step up and uh, make a transition on their assembly lines to start producing ventilators. I was on the, on the phone till God, it was probably 11 o'clock last night, talking to uh, manufacturers, some of the largest manufacturers, not just in Canada of automotive part, uh, parts, but in the, in the world. Uh, I'm, I'm just so, so proud of the people of Ontario for stepping up. I'm so proud of the businesses, uh, the retail council, talked to uh, the largest retail uh, uh, companies in, in the country and, and in the world. 
uh, that are, have their Canadian divisions here. They're offering anything and everything uh, to help Ontario get through this, and we, we appreciate it. But uh, everything's on the table, and we will do whatever it takes uh, to get things moving forward. And the business community is stepping up in a massive way. We're getting calls from all over saying that they'll be able to supply gowns, they'll be able to supply the face masks, they'll be able to uh, gear up for uh, the ventilators. And uh, we're ramping up every single day. And I just, I, I can't thank them enough. Uh, and I can't thank the people of Ontario enough uh, for, for all of us uh, sticking together. That's the way we're gonna get through this. And Premier, you said it's critical to practice social distancing. So yeah. are you considering any sanctions or measures for those who are not doing it properly to punish them? Well, you know, so that's a great, great question. When I, when I go down the street here or travel anywhere in the city, uh, the streets are empty. Uh, people are cooperating. And we can't do this uh, by uh, really, you know, going out there and, and enforcing it. We need their cooperation. Yes, there's always enforcement if we see a gathering at a, at a bar or a restaurant of 50 people. But that's not being responsible. That's not being a responsible uh, Canadian. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, everyone, everyone is stepping up to the plate. And again, I, I appreciate everyone's cooperation uh, because together we'll, we'll get through this. And I'm sure you're aware there's a number of Canadians stranded in different countries. There's a number of them in Peru, including a group of school kids. Is your government doing anything to help repatriate them? Have you spoken to Trudeau? What are you doing to help bring them back? Uh, so I'm, I'm glad you answered that question. I was on, on the phone with a mother uh, four or five times last night, had our, uh, our team immediately call uh, uh, the federal government to get a plane down there. And as I, as I told uh, my team, I don't care if we go bus, boat, uh, airplane, whatever it takes to get those kids back. There's 22 of them. And uh, I was talking to uh, one of the mothers, talking to the headmaster. We had our staff talking to the headmaster of the school. And uh, these kids are coming home. These kids are coming home and uh, we're arranging uh, a flight. And I gotta give a shout out to Air Canada. Thank you, Air Canada, for coordinating this. Thank you, federal government, for helping us out, getting the permits to land. Uh, but we're in full communication. I literally just got off the phone with the mother again. Uh, I think it's probably our fourth or fifth call. And uh, they're, they're so grateful. But uh, we can't wait uh, on delays for uh, bureaucracy or politicians or anyone to uh, react. We can't wait two days, three days. We're acting immediately. And again, when I was on the phone last night, it was, I guess, eight, nine o'clock at night when I got this, when I had this phone call. And uh, we reacted immediately. And because of that react, uh, the way we reacted swiftly and decisively, uh, these kids are coming home. Good afternoon, Premier. I'm just following up on your conference call with the retailers, uh, mm -hmm. the CEOs. Yes. In the spirit of social distancing, did you get a commitment from them to limit the number of people that are allowed in stores at once and somehow spread out lineups as well? Well, that's, that's another great question. Uh, their, their, their concern, and it would be my concern too, we start having people lining up outside, side by side, pushing and shoving. Uh, some of these stores are very large. If we can, and, and the, this is the, the theory, and I, I believe in this theory, if we can uh, stock the shelves and reassure the public that they don't have to be going out and buying every single day, they'll be able to spread out a, a little more. Uh, but uh, their concern is they're going to have lineups. Everyone breathing on each other out in the lineups, and they said it would actually be worse. Uh, they're making sure that there's proper uh, hand sanitizer, uh, wipes, uh, they wipe down the, the carts. They're doing uh, four or five cleanings a day, uh, so I'm told. And uh, we're just gonna have to make sure that, uh, again, it goes back to the supply chain, not, not hoarding until people aren't panicking. Uh, we go back to this toilet paper issue. The last country in the world that should worry about toilet paper should be Canada. We have more pulp than pretty well any country. We have massive capacity at Irving on the 400, up at Kimberly Clark and in Huntsville. Uh, we have the capacity. Uh, I'm just again asking the people, begging the people, please do not hoard the toilet paper. There's not a supply uh, issue if we just 
take a, a case at a, at a time or a, a bundle at a time. I've reached out to uh, the hand sanitizers uh, companies, uh, making sure that there's anything that they need from our government to increase capacity. I just literally got off the phone with one of the large ones before I walked in the, in the door. Uh, we have calls into the handy wipe uh, companies, like companies like a, a Virox that are, are over in the 905 that do handy wipes. We're asking companies to make the transition uh, with the distilleries. We have our ECDEV people calling every single distillery, asking if they could put one of their lines uh, with the alcohol and, and water-based to convert over. As long as they have a proper warning label and they have a bottle, we don't care what bottle it's in. They could use their, their, their liquor bottles as long as it's properly labeled uh, so they won't have to change over. All hands are on deck right now. As I've told uh, the Ontario Provincial Service, it is not business as usual. We cannot wait a day. We can't wait two days or a week for an answer. We want answers by minutes and by hours. Uh, everyone is on full alert and uh, the business community is stepping up in a massive way. And we're getting uh, increased uh, calls to our newsroom mm -hmm. about workers going on vac vacation outside of Canada, all over the world, returning home and refusing to go into self-isolation and going to work. Does the province have the power, whether it be through the Ministry of Labour or another ministry, to find the employer or the employee? And if so, is that something the province is going to start considering? People, people have to self-police themselves. It's common sense. You know, is, is, does it come to public shaming by your neighbours or your co-workers? Uh, folks, we're in a critical situation right now. Uh, if you're coming back from a holiday, you aren't self-isolating. You're putting the people of Ontario at risk. You're putting your family, your kids, your grandparents, your mothers and fathers at risk. Please follow uh, the guidelines that everyone else is following. Do not go into work. Do not go into public spaces. Do not be selfish and go out. Stay isolated for two weeks as we require. We, we don't have the resources and the police to be knocking on everyone's door and saying, are you staying in? We have a responsibility as residents of this province to make sure we all work together. Thank you. Question for the health minister, please. Yes. Minister, I'm just wondering to what extent there are solid lines of communication between the uh, doctors in this province, healthcare system, and doctors in other regions or countries who are bearing the, the brunt of this, the, the worst form of this virus, um, sort of passing along knowledge, best practices, this sort of thing. There are open lines of communication, certainly uh, with Dr. Williams and his colleagues across the country and with the Center for Disease Control in the U.S., the World Health Organization. They are all sharing best practices now. This is a time when we all need to come together. If there is something that is working in a certain population, then we need to share that with everyone else because we are all in this together, not just as Ontarians, but internationally as well. So there are very good lines of communication open. And just lastly, do we have a sense of what these tests are worth, how much they cost each test? Each test, well, there's a, a myriad of factors that it's the testing, it's the reagent, it's the work that's involved in, in reading it. So um, that would be a, a collective number um, that would be involved in that. So it's much, it's worth much more than just the, the test kit itself. Thank you. Hearing from uh, Premier um, and perhaps you and the health minister might want to touch on this. I know that you're a lock them up and throw away the key guy when it comes to justice. You've no. said that many times, yes. but I'm hearing reports of COVID-19 showing up in jails in Ontario, multiple cases. Uh, I'm told in local Toronto jails and elsewhere, uh, complaints from duty council, because while jury trials are s suspended, others are not. No. Um, duty council saying, look, garbages are being emptied, but desks aren't wiped down. Uh, there's very little disinfecting going on. Do we need to start perhaps using technology or increased disinfection while you know, people who are arrested need to make their bail appearances and, and other reasons for courts to remain open? Are we doing enough to stop the spread 
among not only prisoners, but guards, lawyers, mm -hmm. you know, the people that cook for them, everyone else in the system. Well, talking to uh, the Solicitor General, that falls under her preview uh, for corrections as well. Uh, she's been in full communication. We've stressed to the minister how important it is to make sure they have a sanitized area, even inmates, reason being the inmates are in close uh, proximity to the, the guards. Uh, so it's critical that uh, we disinfect uh, the, the, the jails and uh, also making sure that uh, inmates have uh, proper uh, cleaning products, be it, be it soap, uh, hand, hand sanitizer, uh, because they can transmit it over to the guards, guards bring it home. So it's absolutely critical. And, and Brian, I'll be uh, talking to the Solicitor General like I'm talking to all my ministers. Uh, we will reinforce that. Uh, she understands that. Uh, Sylvia Jones does an incredible job. But uh, I've asked all our ministers, I want data. I want to see data because you can't manage unless you measure. And uh, we'll make sure we get the data coming in as, as we are right now on, on everything from the question you just asked me to supplies and health care. Uh, we need to start measuring. We start. We, we need to make sure the forecast is properly uh, done, and and as as this goes up or or hopefully uh, flattens, uh, we'll be able to have a, a good handle on it. But uh, I will make sure that uh, I reinforce that question with the uh, solicitor general today when we have our our cabinet meeting. We have cabinet meetings uh, every single day. Uh, uh, we're going to have one uh, today around 4 o'clock, I believe, and uh, throughout the day, I'm in constant communication with all our, all our ministers. In terms of the impassioned plea you just made for people to stay home, yes. uh, to self-isolate, we've got tens of thousands of snowbirds coming back mm -hmm. this week, next week. They've all been told by their insurance company, get home. Yes. Um, what, what do you say to them? They're going to come home, many of them, to empty houses, uh, no groceries, no food, no supplies. Uh, they do need to self-isolate, but what's your message to them to, as they come back mainly from the United States where mm -hmm. this is much more prevalent than it is in Canada? Yeah, uh, another, uh, I'll, I'll, you know something, first of all, before I answer that question, I wanna thank the media. You're playing a massive role in, in uh, helping us out. I, I just, just wanna, wanna thank you. Um, we have to rely on, on loved ones. Now, people that don't have the loved ones, they don't have any family members to drop off groceries at the, at the step of the door or in, in front of their uh, house or their apartment, uh, will make arrangements for food banks. Again, another great company, Cisco, is stepping up to the plate. I know Gateway Groceries, uh, again, for delivery services. Uh, they said anything you need to call us. So uh, we will be calling on them and uh, making sure that everyone is everyone is fed. So, so they should be looking instead of going out when they get home. Oh, they, they need to self. Online. Well, they yeah, they need to self isolate. Uh, we don't want anyone uh, that has been uh, on vacation to come back uh, without self isolating. Uh, there can't you know there just can't be exceptions. They they need support. Please reach out to family members, neighbors. If you're living beside. Uh, a snowbird that you know they're away because most neighbors keep an eye on each other's house when they're away do them a favor go out get them groceries drop them off but for anyone who doesn't have family members relatives neighbors uh, that will do that we will make sure they get groceries uh, through the food banks we'll be tapping into uh, the private sector uh, to make sure these people are taken care of Premier, is there some mixed messaging going on? Yesterday, the Toronto Medical Officer of Health said, don't even have coffee with your friend. Don't get together with anyone. And yet, we're still allowed gatherings of 50 people or less. Should that number come down to smaller gatherings? Well, I'll pass that over to the Minister of, of Health. And uh, again, I'll, I'll follow the advice of the, our Chief Medical Officer of Health of Ontario. Uh, good point, Cynthia. Everyone has to be singing off the same song sheet. I agree with, with that. I'll pass that over to the Minister. Thank you. It is a very good question, and we are certainly encouraging people to, um, to practice social distancing as much as possible, 
to um, be at home as much as possible, uh, that it, having coffee is, is a great way to connect with people, but we're asking people if you can do it by phone or in another way, please do so because this is so important to prevent the spread of COVID-19. As the Premier indicated, we have a responsibility uh, to protect our own health, but really to protect the health of everybody around us. It really is a matter of life and death. It is very serious. And so we're asking people to please forego these um, get-togethers for now. Please contact each other um, in another way by phone. Uh, it, it's really very important. So while we say that we don't want to have any gatherings of 50 or more people, the smaller the better. And please stay home and, uh, and, and self-isolate as much as possible. And do you think, Minister, more needs to be done to educate younger people? Yesterday, you, you revealed that more and more people in their 30s, not in Ontario, but elsewhere, New York, for example, they're on ventilators. They're getting really, really sick. And I think, you know, the initial messaging was around the world that younger people aren't getting it. They're not getting that sick. Do we need to educate younger people? We've seen in Miami how they were all out having a great time. Are they mm -hmm. taking it seriously enough? Do we need to do more to educate people that even if they're younger, they could still get sick or they could make somebody else very sick? Yes, I think that we need to get the message out more. That's why we are increasing our, our campaigns in, in print, radio, uh, television ads are going to be coming out very shortly, really to talk to everyone. And, and I guess I would say young people in particular to say that while you might not think that you would be uh, susceptible to COVID-19, you are. It doesn't spare anyone and that you are also a carrier of COVID-19 in some cases. And so you may be, uh, by not self-isolating, by going out with large groups of people, you are putting yourself at risk, but you may be putting parents at risk, grandparents at risk, other members of the public at risk. We need everybody to be um, uh, very responsible about this, uh, to recognize that we, we do have that uh, requirement really to, um, to look out for each other and that applies to the entire population. Thank you. Minister, a uh, question for you as well. We've just learned of the second death related to COVID-19 here in Ontario in Halton Region. You're aware of this? It, it just came out moments ago. We're still waiting for confirmation from the coroner's office with respect to the first person who passed away. Um, I don't have any comment to make with respect to any, comp any uh, second person at this point. Okay. Um, I just want to let you know, Halton Region Public Health confirms it. Um, the second COVID-19 related death in Ontario. I'll still have to check on the, uh, the details of that information because I know there was an announcement that the first person passed away because of COVID. That has not been confirmed yet with the coroner's office and I need to make sure that that can be confirmed. My, my second question is, we are hearing, well, as you know, uh, the self-assessment online and uh, when you call telehealth, before you go to an assessment center, the real concern mm -hmm. is if you've traveled uh, anywhere outside the country, specifically in the last 14 days. But now, uh, the Medical Officer of Health here in Toronto saying yesterday that the City of Toronto is investigating 11 cases of community spread. We are hearing potentially in a few days that uh, recent travel will not be a requirement anymore for testing. Is that something you plan to announce soon? Well, as Dr. Williams has indicated on several occasions, we are seeing a spread in the community, that there is, there is evidence that it is in the community. Whether he is prepared to call that community spread or not is really up to Dr. Williams to decide, and I'm sure that he will provide you with that information this afternoon. Uh, for the Premier or for uh, Minister Elliott, the, the ventilator updates is exciting. Uh, when you talk about automakers who are stepping up to the plate to potentially change it up so they can build the ventilators. Which automakers are these? Is it the Oakville plant uh, or is it the GM plant in St. Catharines? Do we know? Uh, Martin Rea is, is often uh, is offered to, uh, if we get the, the, the design, that's what we need. We need the designs and and they, they'll be able to uh, put something together. They said they had 400 people ready to move forward. Uh, spoke to uh, Don White over at uh, Magnitude, the CEO. Uh, he was up late last night. We were discussing the largest uh, automotive part manufacturer in the world. Uh, his words were, Doug, we will do whatever it takes 
to pitch in and help. These are the stories that the, the people need to hear about uh, businesses around around Ontario. I had a uh, call from our Minister Yurik saying there's a, there's a company in his riding that uh, is prepared and ready to start making uh, ventilators. And everyone uh, needs, to, needs to step up. We have the capacity, there's no region, in my opinion, after traveling around Ontario for the last two years, there's no region in North America that is more diverse. We can build anything in Ontario, absolutely anything. We have the resources that other jurisdictions in North America just don't have, no matter if it's natural resources or manufacturing capabilities. Uh, pharma, we have one of the largest pharma industries in North America. I know Toronto's a hub, New Jersey's a hub, uh, Puerto Rico's a hub, but we have the pharma industry on full alert, uh, helping us out uh, any way they can. So uh, I just a message to the businesses, keep your ideas coming. If you have an idea, there's no such thing of a bad idea. I understand that uh, my Minister of Economic Development uh, is going over to Canada Goose. Uh, they have stores, uh, as you know, across the country. They have a lot of sewing machines over there. Let's convert them over making uh, medical gowns. Uh, and again, uh, any, any company that uh, has sewing machines, uh, we need to hear from them. Uh, some might work, some might not work, but uh, it doesn't hurt to, to try. It's uh, all hands on deck right now. Is there, I guess it seems super early, but is there a time frame for, for that to actually happen with the, with, with the automakers? Well, we, again, I was on the phone call late last night. Uh, our team is all over this in full communication, uh, making sure that uh, we can get a hold of the design and, and drawings and uh, make sure we have the parts. But uh, there's, there's no one, in my opinion, uh, that understands manufacturing better than the two companies I mentioned. Uh, they're saying we will provide the staff at no cost, our expertise at no cost. Uh, as, as Don was saying, we may not be the right company, maybe someone else, but we have the resources uh, to, to support them. And this is companies pulling together uh, and, and uh, making sure that they're doing the right thing for the people of Ontario and Canada. We can't rely on uh, importing uh, these ventilators from over in Asia or other places around the world. We, we have the people, we, we have the capacity, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna start manufacturing here in Ontario. Uh, question for the Minister of Health. Um, we're getting reports that uh, as much as uh, assessment centers in Toronto and the GTA have all the, the supplies that they need, uh, on Monday at least, uh, an assessment center in London said they didn't have the supplies they needed to conduct tests. What is the government doing in order to ensure that uh, this isn't just like a province-wide level of, of uh, sufficiency, that we have sufficient resources throughout the regions? Yes, we have been working cooperatively with the federal government who's agreed to help us procure supplies as we need them. And we have uh, just been advised that they are uh, delivering to us 50,000 more test kits with reagents so that we will be able to keep our assessment centers supplied. Uh, and for the Ministry of uh, Finance, um, I I'm hearing a report that uh, LCBO workers are concerned about being kept on the job, that they don't feel like it's a particularly safe time to be working in what is basically a retail space. Has there been any consideration given to uh, further shutdowns of the LCBO? So the reduction in hours was in part respon in response to that. I've been in touch with the CEO as well with, uh, with Smokey Thomas, uh, the head of the union that represents those workers, to make sure that you know, we're, we're putting the health and safety of the workers at the forefront. So, so there's active discussions, as there are, and as the Premier mentioned, I think all of the, the retailers uh, in Ontario appreciate the vital role that they play right now. And so the recent reduction of hours was to make sure that there was more time for uh, making sure that the stores were cleaned. And we're going to continue to work with labor and management to make sure that, uh, that we keep it that way. But, and I'm sorry, just uh, no, no further reductions in hours are, are currently in the plan? Yeah, not at this time. But as we've said, uh, we will have to keep assessing things. Uh, but, but I said uh, throughout the supply chain, and particularly uh, whether it's grocers or pharmacists or others that are supplying uh, the daily needs of people, uh, they are vital, vital partners. And we have to make sure that, uh, that they get what we need from our government, and, and we'll do that. Okay, we'll go to the phone line. First question. Your question comes from Allison Jones of Canadian Press. Please go ahead. 
Hi, I think this question is probably best posed to Minister Elliott. Um, I'm wondering if you're considering at the moment waiving the three month waiting period for OHIP for certain people who are new to the province, um, like new immigrants, migrant workers, et cetera? Yes, we are. We know that uh, there are many people who are returning to Canada who may have been away for longer periods of time. And so, yes, we are looking to change the regulation for a period of time to allow for the waiver of that three-month period so that people will be able to get health care immediately if they need it. Now, would that just apply to people who are returning to Canada, or would it also apply to people who are new to Canada? Uh, that would be for uh, people who are returning to Canada, but we'll also make sure that people who are new to Canada, should they need health care, will also receive it. Okay, this Thanks. will be the last question. Next question. Next question comes from Rob Ferguson of Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Uh, also for Minister Elliott, please. Um, is, I'm, I'm a bit confused on the ventilator situation. Yesterday you said you've ordered 300 new ones, and today it sounded like they're actually here. So uh, where are they, and how many ventilators are there in the system already so that we can calculate what percentage increase this is in ventilators? Because, you know, there's a lot of warnings, as Mike Crawley indicated earlier in his question about a surge. Yes, the 300 ventilators are here. We also had an extra over 200 ventilators in this system that were available for excess capacity in addition to ones that are already in hospitals. So we have a, a good supply now, but we're looking to increase it, of course, um, should we need increased capacity, hence the discussions that the Premier and others have had with the auto parts manufacturers. Thank you, but do you have a number on how many are actually in the hospitals now? We could get that information for you, but uh, suffice to say we have well over 500 in excess over and above what's in the hospitals, but we can get you that number. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, oh, okay, I was just going to make one, one more shout-out. Okay. I want to give a shout-out to the, the Labour leaders. Uh, the Labour leaders have been absolutely phenomenal stepping up to the the play, private and public uh, sector labor leaders, uh, as I know the Minister of Finance mentioned Smokey Thomas. Uh, Smokey Thomas has been an absolute champion. Jerry Diaz, uh, the head of uh, Leuna, Joe Massanelli, uh, offering up his, his mask, his ventilators, masks uh, uh, to the public. And uh, I, can't, I just can't say enough uh, how you've stepped up to the plate and we're forever grateful and, and thank you for helping the people of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you.